This week has really been the peak week of my IBS symptoms kicking in where I've been super fed up, super fatigued and just kind of bored of it all now. But some of the things that I've experienced this week don't include any real change in going to the toilet. However, I have been a lot more bloated and also the other thing that has changed, my weight has dropped by not a ton, but a few pounds nonetheless because of appetite. The other thing I've had to change is my current obsession for Monster and I've had to bin a lot of my favourite foods. It's also left me super fatigued, tired and found it difficult to concentrate when working. I've also done that thing like most people do where they just go onto Google, Dr. Google and type in anything and everything to try and make it better. But I thought instead I'd document this week what I've been doing with my diet to try and help with my IBS. So this is essentially what the daily goat ball has now boiled down to. We're now just down to oats. But the most important thing for me is, at this current moment in time with the new diet, health. For that is because and now as this video is about following a low FODMAP diet I think FODMAP stands for like fermented something I, I'll pop it up on the screen what exactly what it means but it essentially means I eat nothing <laughs> well I can't eat many foods there's loads that I've cut out I'm currently using an app called FODMAP A to Z which is actually super handful because I can just pop foods in there and it tells me like what foods are green, red, yellow, or that are low FODMAP foods, so I can have it. Um, so the low FODMAP diet basically means that I can't have a lot of foods, which are dairy, gluten, and um, high FODMAP, which is like ferment in the gut, particularly carbohydrates. Now I have to cut way out of my oat bowl. We're down to basically just oats, a banana, because apples were really bad for it as well. And we are also just having a bit of cinnamon, some blueberries in there, so absolute peasant-like. The goat bowl is now turned into the no bowl. All over recent years, I've for performance and a lot of like my composition, like I calories, macros, losing weight, adding muscle. Now I've got to very much eat and what I'm going to take you through today is my diet to try and get rid of the IBS symptoms that I've been suffering with for the last couple of weeks. And if I seem like a little bit fatigued today, it's I am because a lot of symptoms that I've had like stomach cramps, tiredness, feeling sick, I've all kind of stemmed from this. So I'm hoping that addressing this diet will start to help out with those stomach issues. Don't copy what I'm doing. I'm not advising it. I'm just gonna show people through my journey of changing my diet, which will hopefully make my health improve, but then also still fuel my performance of what I'm gonna do on a day-to-day -day basis, which is something also that I'm gonna be pulling back on from training. I'll talk about it a little bit later. But this is the new daily note bowl, the note bowl, yes. So what I'm about to pull back from it is the salt caramel sauce, the jam, the custard. I still put a little bit of powdered peanut butter on, even though I'm probably not supposed to, because of why it tastes like a bum hole. I basically got blueberries, raspberries, some banana in, all low FODMAP foods, and it seems to serve me okay. The portion size is a little bit smaller, it's obviously way less calories. Calories have been lower recently just because I can't get as much food in because my appetite's not there, but I still enjoy this and I'm kind of adding a bit more food in different places where and when I can. The other thing that the IBS symptoms had a big impact on is my training as well because it's just absolutely drained my energy levels to the max. So when I go in, I already feel pretty tired and I'm still training in the morning because when I train in the morning, the symptoms don't seem to be as bad. And the only thing that stops it from hurting at the moment is training, which kind of sounds strange, but that's how the cookie crumbles at the moment. I'm not going to take you through this full workout because watching me fatigued doing titty day just probably isn't that entertaining. So what did we do? We did some calves first because they're tiny. Then we did a chest press for two or three sets and then did a flat chest press for two or three sets. It was super entertaining. I then went in and did some dips. Usually I do weighted dips, but again, because I was fatigued and just felt crappy, I did them on the machine instead. You probably noticed from this workout that I did a lot of machine work and not a lot of compound movements just because I felt like crap. This movement is great actually, and I use the foam roller using a ruler band to attach to the bench. So that when you do cable flies, you can essentially get a deeper stretch and it puts you in a better position 
to stretch and squeeze the chest. I then finished off with a bit of bro biceps and did some hanging leg raise, which I didn't too feel too bad in the stomach. Just gonna do a little bit of this. What is, what is our stuff? The thing straight after that, I dived into some physio with Kat again, who, as usual, is absolutely unbelievable. I've hurt my hamstring once again. I am literally the walking glass man at the moment, so I'm getting some stuff done my hamstring, which is why, again, as I'll be talking about later in the video, why I unfortunately have to drop some running out of my train at the moment. But we went over some movement to help me with this. The next meal that I decided to serve up, and this is something I've been having every day, every day now, it's just an omelette. Five egg whites and one egg yolk, just because I don't want a heart attack. As add a little bit of almond milk, it's about the only milk I can use at the moment based on the current app. So I'll just whisk this up, slap it in the frying pan with a little bit of oil. It takes like five minutes, so it's a nice, quick, easy meal if you're a proper lazy peasant like I am. And then I'll just add a couple of little slices of chicken in to give it a bit more texture. Some plain chicken, a little bit of salt, and then I'll serve it up, whack some more salt on it again, because salt bay. And then the other thing I've been using at the moment is just slapping a little bit of mayonnaise on. One of the only things that I'm really still using in respect to condiments is burger sauce. I don't really know if I should be using this. There's not really anything that I can say probably apart from fructose syrup that is in it that is going to cause any issues. But I only have a sprinkle of it. One of the big things that I've cut down on is artificial sweeteners and stuff at the moment. Because I read that that's not great. This is probably one of the meals, just basmati rice and tuna, that kind of is, is the best for my stomach and quite nutritious. I guess you'd probably call a lot of my eating like bro style now, like bodybuilder-esque, which is what I used to do. But, like it, it works at the moment, it's giving my stomach not too much pain, because the big thing with FODMAP has been cutting out gluten and dairy, and it's, it's difficult because I fucking love ice cream. Like, I would deep throat a Magnum any day of the week. But, because I'm cutting out a lot of sauces and condiments and stuff, it's brought my calories down, so, I'm gonna have to try and find a means to pick these back up at some point because, like I was mentioned before, I am starting to lose a bit of weight. Although that, although that was the goal, it's still, I don't wanna lose weight too quickly. We are currently on the way to the doctors. Today, of all days, I see when I was recording, which is quite good. The doctors rang me for a consultation just to discuss possible IBS. It's not 100% IBS at the moment, but I've got all the symptoms of it. Um, so I'm off to the doctors to grab a stool sample pot, whatever that means. So basically some guy, some woman has got to sit there and pick apart my poo, which sounds like the worst job in the world, isn't it? That's not great. It's not, if, if, if there's any kids in school, no one's putting down an application form or the poo picker. I don't think that's the actual title. <laughs> but we're going to do that and then I've got some bloods booked in for next Tuesday as well. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, a couple of tests. We'll find out more, either confirm I've got IBS or confirm it's something else. <sighs> Whew. That was my session done and dusted. So we did 50 minutes workout. I was varying between different watts. I always loved the people who did Zwift and was like, I'll never be that guy. And now I'm that guy. So, like I said, training. Specifically running, I'm dropping out for a little while. As you've seen with physio, I've got this hamstring injury and I just keep getting niggles from running all the time, which is just starting to piss me off a lot now and really getting disheartening. So I'm dropping run out for a little bit. I've got this bike set up. Um, and I've been enjoying my Zwift sessions. I've only done two so, so far, but I've been enjoying them. It's obviously a lot lower impact. I'm gonna be doing three bike sessions per week at the moment. Then the plan is to start splitting. So there'll be 50% running, 50% bike eventually for something that I'm gonna announce later this year. But for now, yeah, I'm enjoying the Zwift setup. And unfortunately, running's taking a backseat, which is 
quite this hot. I'm actually quite good at the ball to be honest because I enjoy my running more than bike. But I'll show you the setup that I've got at the moment. So this is the bike that Lucy's dad has lent me, the Boardman, which is a nice bike. And then I bought this. This is the Wahoo Kicker Snap. I think it was about 330 quid, if not cheap. But they are class because it just snaps on and off. It's really, really simple and easy. This is Bluetooth, which then links up to essentially this screen. So when I'm pedaling and do workouts, this will change. Show me around maps. I can vary through workouts. It will actually change the resistance on this, it'll change the water and cycling uphill and make it more resistant. It even does, like if I'm cycling behind someone, it will let me tuck behind them, it takes away some of the wind resistance, so it's super, super clever. I think there's with membership is maybe like a couple of pounds a month, 10 to 15 pounds a month. So for anyone who's kind of debating it, I think you can get like a 15 day trial, 30 day trial, I think it might be. But yeah, it's awesome, love the setup. Got my water down there, my protein. Link in the description for discount on MP products. So yeah, enjoying this in the little garage setup. I've got some plans from here. So my plan is to, this is gonna become a sauna eventually. Once we get me and Lucy get set up, we're gonna get a little plunge pool, like a cold pool here. Gonna get all these walls plastered, get a TV on there so I can Zwift on there. We've got a squat rack already there with loads of bumper plates and stuff. So we'll get like a small gym set up, but not much because to be honest, I know I wouldn't fucking use it, but it'd be nice to have it there and have the option. And yeah, let's go eat. Yeah, it's a hot day. I'm hanging in the sunshine. We are back from the doctors and we've got our samples that have pulled out everywhere. Obviously there's nothing in those yet. So I've got to fill these two tubes up with the good stuff. And then I've got to take it back tomorrow for the samples we send off to the lab. And hopefully we'll hear something else about it just in time it obviously ties in quite nicely well sure cooking food it's great to talk about human feces whilst the um the air fryer which i absolutely love by the way i've started using it again since i've been cooking more foods i cooked some chicken yesterday so for tea we're having 250 grams of chicken and 350 grams of white potato i put this post up yesterday on social media it's basically me just talking about my new challenge that i'm facing and also the micro school eight week challenge which is starting on what well, day does the challenge start on the 11th? 11th of April, which I'm gonna be doing with some new goals this time. One which is to be pain free, I with my digestive system. Find a way to eat that suits my new demands. Introduce some more cycling, obviously because of the injury that we spoke about before. Rehab those injuries, enjoy a guilt-free holiday with Lucy, and also build on my relationships with food or continue to do so. So with sharing that on social media, one of the downfalls sometimes of it, oh sorry, also the challenge. I'll leave a link in the description to the page if you want to get involved with the challenge, no matter what your goal is, no matter what you want to try and achieve. It's not just about weight loss, you can achieve whatever you want with the support of me and Lucy and our community. So, with sharing things on social media, obviously sometimes it's a good thing because you get a lot of support, but also you get a lot of advice, which is often very varied, and which sometimes isn't helpful because there's so much. Again, always well-intentioned, but the advice comes from people sometimes who aren't educated. The pain today has probably been like a six or seven out of 10. It's not super bad, but it's just mega draining and fatiguing. So you may have even noticed that my demeanor, sometimes this video, my face has been a bit like, <laughs> that's how I feel, I'm just super tired. So hopefully get these tests back from the doctors and continue to follow my diet. But for now, lost some tea. So we have the grand, Finale, the final snack of the day. Just chilling, it is now half nine. What's a bit of Harry Potter? We've got two dark chocolate organic free from rice cakes with some salted caramel, some pack extra crunchy salted caramel. This one's a game changer, by the way, when I haven't got any of the my protein almond butter left. Wanna shop my protein? Link is in the description. Use my coach Benji, I think it's like, I don't know what percent off, but you get discount. I find myself shopping a lot in the free from section at the moment because I'm trying to pick up stuff which is gluten free and dairy free. It's like it's like normal food minus like 50% flavor is the best way to describe it. This is the only like medication I've been taking until I get anything from the doctors is Colifac IBS. So I've been taking one of these tablets before every like main meal, so three times a day. Don't take them by the way because I'm taking them. Again, I can't advise people. I'm just telling you what I'm doing at the moment to try and control, reduce symptoms of. IBS, which I don't 100% know if it is yet. Supplement wise, I'm still using all the same supplements that I usually use for my protein, just minus creatine. It's the only thing I'm not using at the moment, just for 
my own personal headspace really. So yeah, that's pretty much everything. Hope you enjoyed the video. Also, if anyone's got any snacks that they can suggest for people who've got IBS or snacks which are quite good in the gut, drop them in the comments because I'm, at the moment I'm just chowing down like a few, these a few times a day. And my, as you probably know or guessed or seen, my calories aren't super high at the moment. So what I'll also do is I'll try and like whack two or three tablespoons this in during the day high fats just to try and get a bit of calories in there which it also sits well in my stomach if you enjoyed the video if you didn't enjoy it too much it's me just suffering and um, drop the video a like if you found it helpful if it's your first time visiting the channel please subscribe i'll catch you in the next one